But the most accurate museum account, our most represent representative, would be to take your bees from inside the hive, just under the uh, cover, or from an outside frame. Then you get a mixture of older and younger bees. So leave the, the bag open. No liquid in the bag yet. Take a big round jar. It's easier than a smaller j diameter jar. You're going to roll away from the corners of the Ziploc bag. If you crush the bees into the corner, you, you could break the bag uh, loose. And you can hear that crunching noise. You want to roll until you see there's no more crunching noise. And you can see right now, you can see I've got the guts all loose. Now you want to put in one milliliter of water for every bee that's in the, uh, uh, the uh, bag right there in your sample. So I'm going to use a syringe to measure it. If you don't have a syringe, a, a level teaspoon is five milliliters, so you use five level teaspoons for 25 uh, bees. So I got 25 uh, milliliters of water here. Put the 25 milliliters in. Then at this point, you can seal the Ziploc bag. Now you want to just homogenize this until it's all evenly mixed. Go ahead and press those bees. Okay, so now you've got a, a, a mean representative sample for, for each bee and use your, your fancy lab tool uh, right here. I have a uh, microscope slide here. You want to, uh, within the first minute or so, take your sample, because the spores start to sink uh, quickly. Just stir it in there and put one drop right there on the slide. That's all you need. Out of that, all that prep, you're going to get one drop right here. You put a cover slip over it and press it down. That goes underneath the scope at 400 times uh, magnification. And we're going to center that drop on there. And you just uh, uh, look within your field of view and you see if you see any nosema spores. And uh, I'll show you in a minute what they look like. All I'm seeing is just pollen right in here. So there'd be no, no reason to go any further. Uh, if we found some nosema, then what you can do is then do an individual uh, bee squash uh, and that will, uh, of 10 bees. And that will tell you, after you crush 10 bees, that would tell you to the nearest 10% of the percentage of bees in the hive that are actually infected. So what you, oh, I need a, a round table knife. I can do it with this. You're gonna take your bee right here and you're gonna press down next to the, uh, the, the, the end of the thorax, between the thorax and the abdomen and, and press backwards. And that will squeeze all the gut contents out of the rectum onto the slide. Press that down just a little bit. You may just need to add just a tiny drop of water and then put your cover slip back on. And this is just a black or white yes or no. You're going to see whether it's infected or not infected right now. And uh, what you're going to see is you're going to see squash bee guts and rectal contents, uh, digested pollen grains. And this, this bee is clean right here. So you just do that for, for nine more bees and you count how many are infected and how many aren't. Your number of infected bees in a hive gets above four out of 10, 40% of the bees infected. The colony starts to show signs of, of disease overall from nosema. If you get up to about six out of 10, it's serious. It's getting something to worry about. When you get up to about eight bees out of 10 infected, and I see that in the very, very early spring in California, that colony will often go into collapse and do very rapid depopulation, just leaving the, the brood behind. Uh, they stop foraging for nectar. Um, uh, and then poof, the bees just evaporate, usually after a, a, a frost or something like that.